putting pairs next to their existing overworked staff. And if we do that, uh, on round one, by the way, we don't have to go and get uh, you know kids from the inner city who are the worst uh, you know uh, the statistical group as far as success. We can get people who you know oh maybe are just unemployed and when they want to get a job that pays you know median salary of eighty grand and uh, uh, eighty thousand bucks. I say that in St. Louis, everyone knows. Oh, good job. No, no. So we hired a guy at Square. One of the guys used to work with uh, Bob Lee, Bob Lee knew him. Not Bob Lee, not a, not a top tier guy. This guy, good, solid, good, okay? Not world class, but good. We made him a job offer. Do you want to know what his counter offer was? Just guess a number. 120. 120, okay, no. Higher. <laughs> what, what, what would a counter? What would a reasonable counter offer be if guys can get a, in California? In California, one seventy-five. One hundred seventy-five. No, no. You wanted two ten. No, no. It's okay. I, I, I won't mess with you anymore. The counter offer was eight million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was eight million dollars. It was over four years. Two million dollars of stock in a public traded company. So this is this is a liquid asset. Eight million dollar counter offer for a mid tier program. How'd you like to work in that? The, the funny thing was that he actually turned down the counter offer and came to us, um, which is amazing in and of itself. But I mean, you don't have to, you know, round one does not have to have, you know, the total success. All we have to do on round one is prove that we're not impacting the productivity of the person to whom we're pairing, or with whom we're pairing. That's it. If we prove that, every company in this city who is short of talent will open up a seat and a keyboard next to their existing people, and over time, they will hire these people because they need it. So you've solved the connection between training and job, and you've done it in a way that probably is going to improve, and I say probably, but it will probably improve the productivity during the training period and definitely afterwards. We've got very good statistics on, uh, on the afterwards part. We don't have yet a proof of concept there. But somebody needs to lead this, and we yet have not found that. Um, but if, if the cycle works, this is, this is a potential solution. Because this could be offered, and there is no shortage of need for programmers, and we have the raw material in this town uh, to do it. So, hack number one, we just need one person. Let's talk about hack number two. Ray Drain, why we're losing Bob Lee? Well, here's the problem. Um, and this is sort of a moderate hack. I think, I think, that, I think this, is a, this is an issue. Um, the best people get drawn away, not because of the fact that they don't love this town. This is a great, great city to live in. Um, but it is not necessarily a great city to work in if you are uh, performing at a world-class level because you don't have enough peers. So you need a concentration. So if you're the world's best Java programmer, you move to Silicon Valley. Why? Well, because nobody understands the difference between world-class and, oh, you're darn good in this city but over there they do. So at the very top end, you're gonna constantly strip away uh, the most talented people from this town until we get a critical mass. And, um, and this is a serious problem for the area because once they leave and their kids go and you know, you, the cycle, uh, you know, all, those, all, those, uh, all those opportunities uh, root somewhere else. But the question is, how do you make somebody stay? How do we solve this? What's, what's the hack here? Um, and the thing that I realized, and this is actually directly from Bob, um, is that St. Louis is a very sticky place once you have kids. And if you've ever had to try to recruit somebody away from St. Louis, you will realize just how hard it is to get somebody to leave this town. As a matter of fact, I know people who have just quit their jobs because they wanted to stay in St. Louis. So, um, it's not particularly uh, interesting until you have kids. But once you have children, 
this town is fantastic because we have some of the best educational resources in the country. I mean, if you look at the quality of the education you can get at uh, the public schools, the public universities, um, the grade schools, the day like it's, it's, a, it's a standard of excellence that is almost unparalleled anywhere. And um, I'm not talking just the, the private schools, although we have some phenomenal private schools. We have world-class public schools. And that's really hard to leave. If you want to pull your kid out of Ladue Public Schools and put him in Palo Alto, Okay, first of all, your house will cost seven times as much. And you know what? Your kids' educational quality will go down. And that's in the richest part of the richest part of, Sam, uh, of, of, the, of Silicon Valley. We've got a great resource here. And this is very, very sticky. In other words, it's very hard to get people out of this town. Once you get them here, they tend to stay here. So how do we get them here? Well, I'm going to suggest we ignore my profession which is, you know, the tech world, and then we concentrate on life sciences because St. Louis really has an advantage here. We have a medical school that is ranked among the best in the world. You know, Harvard and Washington U, you know, just for the top spot with a couple of others. But, you know, every other year we get it, okay? We have some world-class life science research going on at the Danforth Plant Science Center. We have Monsanto, and we have a bunch of groups that have um, tremendous skills in this area. So this is a vertical where we've already got kind of a lead. So how do we extend the lead? Oh, the other thing is life scientists, and they tend to be older. In other words, you don't get that PhD in, without, you know, probably getting close to 30. Well, once you're getting close to 30, and since you're a life scientist, you know it's time to reproduce. <laughs> so in St. Louis, we have a head start here. So, my suggestion here, and I guess, uh, I guess this is something that any individual can do, but we should really fund the life sciences as a, as a community. Um, but I said this is a hack, so I said, well, what can an individual do? Um, I'm going to give you an example of something called BioCurious, which is a great uh, hackerspace for life science. Because, um, so a hackerspace is basically a place that has expensive tools that you couldn't otherwise afford. So a DNA sequencer, you know, a couple of mass spectrometers, you know, the things you need if you want to play with um, those molecules. Uh, they collect them together and basically turn them loose. There are groups like this uh, springing up all, all over California. You know what BioCurious was started for? $35,000. It's 35 grand to get that started. And they've got one of the most vibrant hacker spaces. They're guys going in there sequencing their own DNA. You know? I mean, you can do it for Valentine's, right? Um, and uh, I think St. Louis has the opportunity to do this. So, um, so this is sort of a two-level hack. If you happen to be rich, um, or want to get rich, actually, um, this is a very, very good place to put money. It pays huge dividends. Um, or it can be started at a very low level. Somebody wanted to start a hacker space for biology, I know you can come up with a 35K. Um, this can happen. And I, I just have to point out Rivervest. Anyone heard of Rivervest? Okay. And, and, and you guys invest? Uh, sorry. They turned a $166 million fund into a, over a billion dollars. This was the most successful investment fund in 2007, that was funded in 2007. They just finished uh, that cycle. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tax return. Homegrown, life science, we have an advantage here. This is worth considering. Okay, um, hack three. I almost cut this out of my presentation. I almost cut it out because, in fact, um, when I said this at the uh, Plant Science Center, I really had high hopes. Uh, for St. Louis Manufacturing because we had just been selected as the uh, manufacturing site for the Emerald Van. And um, I thought it was going to be the start of a new manufacturing base, which is something also that I think is really important. Um, and I thought this one was going to be easy. You know, of all the stuff, I figured, well, you, you want to deal with crime in North St. Louis, that's, that's going to be really hard. You want to build a plant to build cars with a 40 plus percent IRR, 
Oh, that shouldn't be too hard. I figured I'd say it at the damn Fourth Plan Science Center and all the rich people uh, in the audience, and believe me, there are a lot of rich people in the audience, uh, uh, would just whip out their pocketbooks and we would just get this one done. Um, turns out, it didn't work. Um, this is what I said. St. Louis is internationally competitive. So this is, this is actually true. There is a company in, uh, in England that built a uh, battery-powered uh, vehicle, electric van, uh, that's used for uh, delivery runs. And the interesting thing about uh, delivery runs like UPS and FedEx, you know, is that you know how long those routes are. Okay? And because you know the length of the route, you know how long the battery is going to last. And because you know how long the battery is going to last, you can do the math before you send the darn thing out into the streets, and so you never run into the battery capacity problem. So the number, the number one limitation of electrical vehicles today is not the drivetrain, it's just how many batteries, right? How long do the batteries last? Well, with delivery vans, it doesn't matter. So it's the perfect application. And these guys built uh, this van, I've driven it, I flew to England, drove the thing, it's great. Um, they talked to uh, all these van companies that want to buy it, so they've got a market, and then they looked for a place to manufacture, and they picked St. Louis, Missouri. They picked us. We didn't do much for well, actually we gave them a bunch of tax credits, but like everybody gets tax credits, right? But it turns out St. Louis is a good place to build stuff. We got rivers, we got good logistics, we're close to a lot of the suppliers that they need. I mean, it's just physically a good place. It's better than China. And manufacturing jobs are basically better jobs because they tend to have more uh, impact on the community. And these factories are sticky. Once you build a factory, it's hard to move the factory. So this is great. Why couldn't we do this? Well, here's the Emerald Van. Um, and they had, at the time, a $200 million follow-on investment ready. They had these, these, these groups that wanted to do it. And I was saying, all we need to do is lead. A lead investment in this case was uh, 10 million bucks. And I was like, I get a 10 million.